here are three views and the muscles that we've talked about so far. And when I put in the latissimus dorsi, I want you to notice that it goes underneath the um, trapezius. So let's look at the naming of this muscle. We have the latissimus dorsi. Dorsi just means on the back, so like a dorsal fin on a fish or something like that. Uh, latissimus, for me anyway, is harder to remember. It means the widest muscle, uh, but that's not how I remember it. I remember it by just putting an F on front and calling it the flatissimus. So flat is, uh, you know, so it's the flat muscle on the back. That's the way I think of it anyway. You can see that it attaches to the humerus, and what's important to notice is that it attaches in front of the teres major. So let's look at how it curves around the teres major. Underneath the arm is pretty complicated, and the way to deal with that complexity is just to remember it piece by piece. Um, starting with the teres major, we'll just uh, understand where um, each additional muscle is according to the muscles below it. So with this muscle, um, the latissimus dorsi, the most important thing to remember is that it goes right in front of the teres major. Let's look at the attachments. In blue we have teres major and red we have the latissimus dorsi. The yellow is the bicipital groove which we'll talk about later. And it attaches to the spine ribs and pelvis. I think this is one of the muscles that we're looking at the clay representation of it really does give you a better sense of its shape. 